Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So, um, this is spooky. I know. So, this puppet, and that's what she is, is a puppet. I can't get my hand up there because it's built for a kid, but I can do it a little bit. Little puppet for a child. Uh, that is from the, I think it's a video game. I'm not sure. I think it's a video game. They're Hello Puppets. And this one is Scout. So I was asked by a subscriber to make, she's got little pigtails, to make um, this puppet. And um, that's what I did. And she's pretty, um, yeah, she's pretty creepy looking. So... Let's jump right into this. She's cute and she's ugly at the same time. So you're gonna need a five millimeter. But please just use the hook associated with your yarn. So whatever your yarn calls for. Uh, just know that if it's not a five or the yarn I'm using, it probably will be smaller or bigger. So, um, don't come at me in the comments, <laughs> but use the use the hook associated with the yarn that that your yarn calls for. Most of my yarn calls for a five or a five point five. So um, she is not built in amigurumi, so just regular crochet. Uh, and for those out there that don't know what I mean by that, an amigurumi. Um, is a tighter weave so we usually go down in hook size and we're not going to do that and we usually don't slip stitch and chain but we're also not going to do that so however the hands I just did an amigurumi the puppet itself I did not do an amigurumi so we're going to be you know playing with the two two of those so I'm going to start with my five I think there is a part in here where um, I change the hook size for something but I'm, I'm not positive um, <laughs> and I just finished the pattern if you can believe it so I used peach for the skin color because the picture that I received and I'll put it up now she looks like she has a bit of a red tinge to her now peach doesn't have a red tinge but that's the best that I could do for skin color is craft smart peach and then the uh, and this is a little bit on the thicker side most craft smarts are on the thicker side this calls for a 5.5 and then for her hair is this beautiful blue and it is loops and threads impeccable and the color is bright sky blue. So all this is going to be written in the PDF as well. Um, the white I use is this this little ball of patents, Canadiana. Just white. You can use any white you want. And the red that I'm using for the... Um, I can't say it on YouTube because I'll get demonetized, but for the, you know dirty stuff on the bottom of her shirt is this um, uh, Craft Smart uh, tomato. That's what it is. This is a tomato. The black that I used which is just for the inside of the mouth is Red Heart Black so you can just use some scrap for that. And then her nose and her eyelids I used um, if I can find it here, I don't have the uh, the tag, but I wrote it down before I used it. Um, you just need a scrap yarn for this too, but this is coral, and this is uh, loops and threads. So, um, that's what I use for her nose, her stitching, her eyelids. The eyes I will put up right now, so you know where I got the eyes and what they are. All right, let's jump right into this. So we're gonna start by building the 
arms first because we have to sew those on later and then we'll get to the shirt. So the first thing we need to start with, and this stuff's going to be done in amigurumi, is the thumb. So I want you to make a magic ring of six single crochets. If you struggle with the magic ring, just do a chain two and put everything into the first stitch. If you want to learn how to do a magic ring, we're just going to wrap around these two fingers and come across. You're going to go up and under, grab this guy, pull him through, flip, twist, scoop, and pull through. That's your chain one. If you are doing something with a double crochet, you might have to chain one more time, but the way I do it, you end up with a magic ring plus your chain one, so six single crochets in the middle of this. For the next four rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these six stitches. So I am just going to count without a marker. But this is amigurumi, so we didn't slip stitch or anything. You just go right into the next stitch and start building. So that's my first row, so I'm just going to flip it, pull my middle closed. So that's what you should have. That's your thumb. Uh, I did not stuff mine. So you can go in and fasten off and make your second one. We might as well get that ready because we got to make two hands. So we just need a little bit of a sewing tail and that's to sew it to the hand after we make it. So I'll put the pattern up. Go ahead and make your second piece and I'll meet you right back here. So I've got my thumbs done, so I'm just going to set those aside until my hands are on their way. So for your hands, I want you to start with a magic ring of six single crochets. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around. So after your first stitch, that's where the marker goes. And then stitch number two can go into that same space. Two single crochets in each stitch around gives you 12 stitches. So your next round is going to be one single crochets and an increase. I'm going to weave in my tail at the back, but you can do whatever you want. That is my one single crochet with my marker, and the next stitch gets the increase of so two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So I should have 18 stitches. For the next five rows, you're just gonna put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So 
two. That is my five rows. So here is where we sew on a thumb. So I don't move my marker or anything. I go right in next to the stitch next door to my marker. And I'm just going to use a couple of stitches. So this is my first one. I'm just going back through it again. And then my second one. And I'm just going back through it again to make a knot. And then you can just shove that down in there. So you can stuff this hand a little bit, but I wouldn't go overboard because it is going to be a puppet and we don't want it to be too overly heavy or anything. But if you wanted to put a band on the hand to stick a stick in so that they can use the puppet and move the arm with a the stick, then you kind of probably would want stuffing in there. So all up to you. I'm not telling you what to do. It's just a suggestion. So now that our thumb's on, we're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch around. The magic number is going to be 21. So if you can get 21 stitches, then that's great. That's my 21st stitch, so I was close. I had to put two stitches in that stitch there to get 21, but I got 21 stitches. Nobody will notice. Your next round, we're going to instantly decrease now, so your next round is going to be one single crochets and a decrease. That's one single crochet, and then Whichever decrease you're comfortable with, invisible decrease is done in the front loops. Pop around, pick up your second front loop, yarn over, pull through. Or a regular decrease, which is going into the whole stitch, pulling up a loop, going to your next stitch, pulling up a loop, and then yarning over and pulling through all three. So it's your choice. It's always your choice. So one single decrease all the way around is going to leave you with 14 stitches. So you should have 14 stitches. For the next 11 rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of those 14 stitches and then we're going to switch to blue. So don't forget to stuff your arm as you make your 11 rows but just slightly stuff your arm. Just keep in mind that it's a puppet so it has to be lighter weight. I'm on my last row and when I get to my last stitch, I'm just going to pull up a loop. I'm not going to finish that stitch because, well, with my, with my peach, I'm going to go to my blue. So I like to draw my blue straggler and my peach. I like to make a double knot and cut that off because I don't want to weave. I feel one side is usually bigger than the other side and I absolutely hate that so I have stuffing in there but I can still squish my arm like that's how much stuffing that should be because it's it's a puppet <laughs> I know I've said that 15,000 times so with your blue you're gonna do eight rows of just one single crochet in each stitch
So this is my last row. So I am not stuffing anything in the blue. I just stuff the arm. When you fasten off, you have to be in the middle on either side, depending on which arm you're doing. So this arm is going to fasten off just about the middle. I'll probably move it over. The thumb is going to stick out. But the other piece that you're going to make, the thumb needs to still stick out away from the body. So you're going to have to make sure you fasten off over here. So you may have to add stitches or take away stitches to make sure you're on the other side. So if you're fastening off on this side like I am, your next hand fasten off on this side. So you won't even notice the, the few stitches. You won't notice the difference, but it'll help when you sew your hand to the shirt that your thumb is going to be out for either side. So I didn't put anything up here because this it goes up against the shirt. And again, it's a puppet, so. So I'm going to put one more single crochet in before I fasten off because I want to be right in the middle. So I'm going to fasten off here. You need a sewing tail just to sew it to the shirt. So uh, not overly long. We only use a few stitches. So I will put the pattern on, on the screen and you can go ahead and make your other arm and I will meet you right back here. So I got both my arms done and they're fastened off the ends that they need to be fastened off and I think that's the end of chapter one um, that that was you know probably an hour ish that we we did these so um, I will meet you in chapter two we're going to start doing the shirt and that's going to be in regular crochet so we're not going to be doing um, any more amigurumi as far as the puppet part of it goes so I will see you in chapter two So welcome back to chapter two. So we're going to start the shirt. So we need red and white. We're going to be doing a little bit of tapestry crochet on the bottom. Um, if you've never done it before, it is easy peasy. PDF users, you'll see um, starting in round three, you'll see R, eight single crochets, W, 21 single crochets, R is red and W is white. So this goes on for a few rows and then we are done and I'll show you that is what we're doing. So carry the red throughout all the way around and that way you get this sort of artifact where it looks like the, the um, dirty stuff. I can't say that word on YouTube. It looks like it's bleeding right through and then it really bleeds through. So um, that's what we're doing right now. So if you've never done tapestry crochet, it's easy, easy peasy. But we're going to start with red. And you're going to make a slip knot. You're going to chain 60. So that is my chain of 60. Make sure it stays straight and you're going to come back up here for the first stitch that you did. You're going to slip stitch to join these two. Chain 60. 
chain one. I want you to do one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. I'm going to weave my my tail end. Just try to go through the top piece of the chain. Um, we're doing something on the bottom of the shirt later. So just go through the top part of the chain. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, we can still make it work. So I'm all the way back around. This was my chain one, so I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of that. And I'm going to chain one. So we're going to incorporate color in this next round. But throughout this project, I want you to put your first stitch into this chain one space or chain two space or chain whatever if you've decided to do this in half double I mean it's completely up to you it's your project but um, to cut down on the seam I just want you to start your first stitch in that chain space so right in there right in there uh, so we're gonna incorporate some some white in this so let me just get untangled with my colors I still got my peach going on let's move that my white. So first I want you to do eight single crochets. Your first stitch is going to be, whoops, in this chain one space. Eight single crochets in the red. This is my eighth stitch. So I'm going to finish my 8th stitch with white. And unfortunately we have to do some weaving in this because I need to carry both colors. So with the white, I'm going to do 21 single crochets. Because the shirt is mostly white, so... I am carrying my red at the back. This is my 21st stitch. So I'm going to go back to my red. So I'm going to finish my 21st stitch with red. I'm going to cut off this white. This was my straggler from attaching. And with red, so I'm going to weave my white in at the back. With my red, I'm going to do three single crochets. On my third stitch, I'm going to go back to white. So I'm going to finish my third stitch with white. And with white, I'm going to do 28 single crochets.
That's my 28th stitch and brings me right back to where I started. So I'm going to slip stitch to the top of that and I'm going to chain one. So round four starts off with white. I still have my red attached and weaving in. My first stitch goes into that chain space. So on my third st white stitch, I'm going to finish that with my red. And with red, I'm going to do three single crochets. And on my third single crochet, I'm going to go back to white. So I'm going to finish that stitch with white. With white, I'm going to do 10 single crochets. This is my 10th white. I'm going to go to red and I'm going to do two single crochets in the red. So on my second stitch I'm going to finish it with white and with white I'm going to do nine single crochets. Don't worry about the rolling, it's only because we didn't go up in hook size. So, but it won't uh, it won't stay l like that. So on my ninth stitch, I'm going to finish that with red. And with red, I'm going to do four single crochets. On my fourth red, I'm going to finish that with white. And with white, I'm going to do 13 single crochets. So on my 13th stitch, I'm going to finish that with red. And with red, I'm going to do two single crochets. So on my second stitch, I'm going to finish with white. And with white, I'm going to do 14 single crochets to the end of the round. Slip stitch and chain one. So, this is what you should have. So we're kind of getting less and less with the uh, with the red. So this is our last row with the tapestry crochet. Most of it's going to be white. So start off with four single crochets with your white. The first stitch goes into this chain space. So on my fourth stitch, I'm going to go to red. And with red, I'm going to do four single crochets. On my fourth stitch, I'm going to finish that stitch with white. And with white, I'm going to do nine single crochets. Mm -hmm. 
This is my ninth stitch. I'm going to finish it with red. And with red, I'm going to do three single crochets. On my third stitch, I'm going to go back to my white. So finish that third stitch with your white. And with white, I'm going to do 12 single crochets. This is my 12th stitch. I'm going to finish it with red. And I'm only doing one single crochet with the red. So I'm basically going to pull up a loop and then finish that with white. And that gives me my one red. And I'm going to do 19 single crochets with my white. This is my 19th stitch, so I'm going to finish it with red. With red, I'm going to do three single crochets. On my third stitch, I'm going to go back to white. And with white, I'm going to do five single crochets. And then I'm going to slip stitch to the top of this chain one and I'm going to chain one. So we can cut our red off. Pull that out. And now we're just left with the white. I want you to do one single crochet in each of these 60 stitches for the next 14 rows. Your first stitch is always going to be in this chain one space. So I'm back, that's my 14 rows. So now we're gonna decrease. We're gonna do, I've already slip stitched, did my chain, and then I put my, my uh, one single crochet in there already. We're gonna do three single crochets and a decrease. My first stitch is already in there. That is three single crochets. And I'm going to do invisible decreases, so just done in the front loops. I'll show you that again. That's my three single crochets. And invisible decreases are in the front loop. Pop around to the second front loop. Yarn over, pull through, pull through. But you can do whatever decrease you want. You do a regular one or an invisible one. So I am all the way back around. I should have, I have 48 stitches. I'm going to slip stitch and chain one. For the next two rows, I'm going to put one single crochet in each of those 40. Look at a big knot. 
in each of those 48 stitches. And then we are going to change to blue. So I will see you on the other side. So I'm back around and I'm on my last stitch and I've pulled up a loop but I'm going to finish that stitch with my blue. So if you do what I do and tie a knot you cut your white off. We will not be going back to that. So I'm going to slip stitch, chain one with my blue. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. So the first stitch starts in that chain space. That's two single crochets and then my decrease. So this is just a regular decrease. And I'll show you again. It's two single crochets and then I go in and pull up a loop, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. That's a regular decrease. So I'm all the way back around. I'm going to slip stitch and chain one. You should have 36 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and a decrease. And it's going to take you down to 24 stitches. Your first stitch is in that chain one space. So that's one and then you jump right into your decrease. So you can slip stitch and chain one. So we're going to sew our arms on here. So turn this so that your seam is on the side ish. I mean, we certainly don't want this to be in the way of putting an arm on. So I'm right here. I'm going to put my arm on right next to where I've slip stitched on that. So if you remember, we fastened off on the side that we need the arm sewn on. So that's just what we're going to do. So because it's a puppet, you're going to have to weave this, oops, you're going to have to weave this in because it's a puppet, you can't just stick it down in, in the middle. I guess you could stick it down inside the arm. Nobody's really going to know if you stick it in the arm.
So a bunch of arms are sewn on. So I want you to do one single crochet in each stitch around and I need the magic number to be 42. So I'm at my chain one spot so I'm going to chain one. So your first stitch is in this chain one space. So this is my 42nd stitch, and I'm going to slip stitch, and chain 1. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease, and then we're going to change to our skin color. So your first stitch goes into that chain space. That's two single crochets, and then I'm just going to do regular decrease. So I've already changed my skin color because I thought the camera was recording and the camera was not recording. So I've already changed on my decrease. I finished my decrease with my next color. I've already chained one and I'm about to start the next round. Sometimes when you hit record it doesn't actually start recording. <laughs> so um, my old camera didn't do that so I'm not used to it yet. So um, I'm going to chain one. The next round is going to be one single crochet and a decrease. So number one goes into that chain space and then your decrease. This will bring you down to 22 stitches. So that's my 22nd stitch. I'm going to slip stitch, chain one. So that's as small as I'm going. We need to be able to get a hand up here, a child's hand. Now, my puppet, I can barely get my hand up it, so it's not really going to be that great for an adult. If you want to make this for an adult who wants to entertain their child, um, then I would leave out this last row because it gets it is pretty tight. This is built for a 7 inch wide hand. I measured my granddaughter's hand. So for the next two rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 22 stitches. So I'm back around after my two rows. I'm going to slip stitch and chain one. So if this neck looks big to you, there's nothing we can do about it because it just has to be. So um, the next round is going to be starting to build the head. So we're going to be doing two single crochets in each stitch. So right now you have 22 stitches. So when you come back around, you should have 44 stitches. And that includes this first space in the chain two space. And that's still just a cut down on the seam. 
So two single crochets in each stitch around, it gets pretty squishy. It's 44 stitches. It is very squishy. So I'm going to slip stitch into that first space and I'm going to chain one. So now your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 44 stitches. Starting in the chain one space, which I've already missed. <laughs> I'm all the way back around. I'm going to slip stitch and chain one. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. You're going to have a couple of extra stitches left over. Your first stitch goes into that chain space. That's number one, two, and three. And then your next stitch will get the increase of two single crochets in the same space. So I'm going to slip stitch to the top of that first chain and chain one. So you should have 55 stitches. For the next two rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 55 stitches. So I am back around with my two rows. I'm going to slip stitch and chain one. So I think this is where we're going to leave it for the end of chapter two because that's been a lot, probably longer than an hour. Um, so, so um, we will meet back in chapter three. If you guys don't know how my chapters work, um, um, they're all in the same video. Um, if you want a chapter just go down in the description box all you have to do is click on that number and it will take you right to it you don't have to scroll you don't have to try to search it'll take you right to it easy peasy so I think we'll leave the rest for chapter three and uh, finish finish her up probably in chapter three she'll be all done except for you know the hair the hair's a lot but you know welcome back to chapter three so we just left off um, with the two rows of one single crochet in each of these 55 stitches so we're gonna start making the mouth so the mouth is pretty big <laughs> so we're gonna start by doing 18 single crochets 
right now I am at the back of her head so hopefully you're in the same spot so see my arms are backwards I'm at the back of her head almost in the middle kind of off to the one side kind of more off to the left side a little bit so I'm gonna do 18 single crochets to bring me around to where I want the mouth to start so do whatever crochet so I don't know where you are um, hopefully in the same spot as me um, so do your whatever number of crochets it's going to bring you around to where you want your mouth to start I'm going to do 18 starting in the first stitch being my chain one space So this is my 18th stitch. So if I fold my head down to give you an idea of where I am right now. So I'll fold that down. And I am about two stitches from the end. And this is where my mouth is going to begin. So I'm going to chain 25. That is my chain 25. I am going to skip 20 stitches. And in my 21st stitch, I'm going to put a single crochet. So this counting as your first stitch, I'm going to do 17 single crochets back to my slips stitch area. That's my 17th single crochet. I'm going to slip stitch and chain one. So now that's the beginning of your mouth so when we come around and we do one single crochet in each stitch you have to get into all these stitches you're not working the space you're working the stitches and for the next four rows you're going to do one single crochet in each stitch So just the top stitch because we need this for sewing down here so just one piece the top part of the stitch So I am done my four rows. This is what it should look like. This is what it should look like. <laughs> Pretty funny. So um, I'm just going to slip stitch here and chain one. So this next row is going to be done in the back loops only and I'll tell you why. So you've got your puppet. We're going to sew a mouth in here, right? The top of the head needs to have what I call a brain box for stuffing. So you can sew your eyes on, you can get your hair on and everything else. So we need to actually start to make a shelf inside of here to hold the brain box. Does that make sense? Your hand's going to come up through this hole and go into the mouth part. So starting here, because this is enough room for a child's hand, so starting in this next round, we're going to be doing back loops only to start our shelf to hold our stuffing. So back loops 
only in your chain one space and then every space around is going to be done in the back loops. And it's just one single crochet in each of these 60 stitches. This is my last stitch. I'm going to slip stitch, chain one. So all of these exposed front loops, we're going to get into them later on to finish building the head. But right now we're going to stick to these stitches so we can build our shelf for our brain box. So your next round is going to be five single crochets and a decrease. First stitch, starting in your chain one spot. That's my five single crochets and then my decrease going to do this it's going to you're going to manage to do this 8 times so i'm all the way around with my sequence i have 4 stitches left which brings me to 52 stitches. Chain one. So your next round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease. You're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to get eight times around. You're going to have extra stitches. It's number one in your chain space. That is four single crochets and then your decrease. So I am all the way back around with my sequence. I have four extra stitches, which brings me to 44 stitches for this round. Slip stitch, chain one. So all of this folds down. And this decrease is being done like this. Making the brain box. So we just gotta close this in and then we'll reattach here at the front and continue to build our head. And this is where all the stuffing's gonna go for your hair to be able to sew your eyes and your nose on and, and everything. So that's what we're doing. So your next round is going to be two single crochets. I skipped three. <laughs> um, just because of the way it's looking right now. So I jumped right to two single crochets and a decrease. That's two single crochets and then your decrease all the way around. So you should get around evenly ten times, slip stitch and chain one. So we just took 10 stitches off, so you should have 33 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochet is in a decrease, and it's going to be the same thing. You're going to get around 10 times. 
So that's number one starting in your chain one space. So you instantly go into a decrease. So oh, that brings me to 22 stitches. I'm going to slip stitch and chain one. So we're going to repeat that again, our one single crochet decrease one more time. And that should be about it because if you fold this down, it's difficult because it's a puppet. So it's the head's not getting um, a little bit. The head's not getting this part of the head doesn't get stuffed, so it is very difficult to deal with. <laughs> but you just have to have a little bit of patience. So we're just about done our little shelf here. So after our one single crochet decrease, that'll be it. We're going to fasten off and cinch this closed. And that should be nice and tight to hold our stuffing. And then we're going to reattach back onto these front loops that we left exposed. So your last round for the shelf is going to be one single crochet and a decrease. So you're going to get all the way around. You're going to have one extra stitch, which brings you to 15 stitches. And then you're going to slip stitch and fasten off. So let's grab our needle. We're going to cinch this closed. So we're going to use the front loops. We're going to go in the front loop and out the front loop, just like that, all the way around. So once you're done, you can pull. So we're going to pop around and secure this with a little knot. I do it both ways. You can choose to do whatever you want. It's your project. And then you can just weave right here. You don't have to really go anywhere else. This is uh, something that nobody's ever going to see. So, it's just here to hold our little brain. You know, I don't even have to cut that off, honestly. So, it doesn't matter if it's all squiggly. So, that gets sunken down like this. You'll understand it more once we start to build. And then the fingers go in here for the mouth once we get the mouth done. So that's our, gonna be our little brain box. In the meantime, we're going to um, make our mouth it's going to be a lot easier so we're going to make the mouth and we're going to sew it in before we continue with the head i think it would make everybody's lives a lot easier if we just did it that way so get your black and i'll meet you right back here so i have just a little ball of black for my mouth you don't need much so just whatever scrap black you got laying around or whatever I'm still using the same hook that I have been. We're going to make a magic ring.
and we're going to put six single crochets inside. I know it's black, so I know it's going to be super hard to see. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch. We're going to do this amigurumi, so we're not slip stitching or chaining. And we are going to use a stitch marker. So after your first stitch, that's where your marker goes. Then you can put your second stitch in that same space and two single crochets in each space all the way around for a total of 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochets and an increase. I'm going to weave in my tail at the back. That's one single crochet with your marker. And the next stitch gets the increase, which is two single crochets in the same space. And repeat for a total of 18 stitches. Next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. That's number one. That's number two. And then your next stitch gets an increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat for a total of 24 stitches. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase, and this will bring you up to 30 stitches. Your marker is always number one. That's three single crochets and then your increase. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase. Your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. This will bring it up to 42 stitches. Your final round is going to be six single crochets and an increase. And this will bring it up to 48 stitches. And that is as far as we go. Alright, that is it for the mouth. So, we can fasten off with sewing tail. So, 
just so this doesn't get caught up in your thinners, I'm going to cut it off. I weaved it in. If you didn't weave it in, you're going to have to sew it in. But I weaved mine in. So, well, before we sew it in, we're going to have to put the, well, we don't have to, but we can put the tongue on. So this gets folded in half. I just fold it in half so this is on the outside. And you can do any way. You can have this be the inside of your mouth or you can have this be the inside of your mouth. It doesn't really matter what the inside of your mouth is. So um, let's get some red and we'll we'll make the tongue and put the tongue on first and then we'll sew the mouth in and then we'll worry about the teeth later. So my red We're going to start by moving that. So we're going to make a chain six and then do five single crochets back up. So you only have five working stitches when you make a chain six because the sixth one is still on your hook. So five single crochets brings you right to the end. You can chain one and turn your work. In this very first stitch, you're going to put a double crochet. In the next stitch, you're going to put a half double. And then a single in the next stitch. Next stitch, we'll, oh, I'm getting my black in here. The next stitch, we'll get a half double. And then this last stitch, we'll get a double. And then you can fasten off with a bit of a sewing tail. So before I start sewing, I just want to bring this back here, and that's your tongue. So just where you folded this in half, so just fold it to these flaps or even, making sure that this guy is off to the side to start your sewing. So when you sew this, don't go past this crease. Sew it kind of more to the front of your work. So that's your tongue. It doesn't have to be anything spectacular. So just remember how you need to keep this and then that's about all that the child's going to feel with his hand. So there we go. I don't think mine's quite in the center. I should have moved it over more but you know that's typical. <laughs> typical me. Don't seem to sew well no matter the situation. So this goes in your mouth, obviously like this, and I want you to use the back loops when you're sewing this on because we're going to be using the front loops to kind of make, you know, the finish, the finish part of it. So don't touch any of these loops. You're going to kind of roll it over and use these little back bumps. And then over here you're going to use the back loops and leave all these front loops for us to get into later. So that's how I want you to sew this on. So 
So I'm going to not put anything into this part. I'm just going to do these back bumps on the top. So that's the direction I'm crocheting or uh, sewing. Now you ha you can use the whole stitch on this black part. You don't need to use back loops or anything. But again, it's completely um, up to you. I'm going to use just the back loops to sew, just because I think it aesthetically would would look better. So. But that's my preference. I'm in no way telling you what you should do. Uh, so while we have our red out, let's, um, let's do the bottom of this shirt. Um, we might as well do our little extras before we complete the head. So I reattached on the bottom of this shirt just to make a nice little lip on the bottom since it is a hand puppet. So attach anywhere you want to single or slip stitch, single crochet, whatever you want to attach with. We're going to go and pick up these bars and we're just going to do a single crochet. So I'm just going to try to weave in my tail. So pick up these bars and do a single crochet all the way around and it'll put this lip on the bottom of your puppet that'll make it look better. So you're just doing a front post single crochet all the way around. I'll show you in a second. So it'll put this lip, or this wide rim, all the way around the bottom. So I'm back around where I started. I'm going to put one more in and then just slip stitch and fasten off. You only need a weaving tail. And that's the bottom now. A nice rim along there. So I'll get your skin color. We're going to reattach to do this mouth part. So all these front loops that we've left exposed, we're going to get in there and do some slip stitches. So I'll just reattach with a slip stitch. these these loops in the bottom we're just slip stitching
corners are difficult. But when you come back around, you're going to just slip stitch as best you can. It's all very tight in there, so do the best you can. And then we weave. So this is going to be our mouth and we're going to worry about the teeth later. We'll get the teeth in there later, but right now that's the mouth with our tongue. My tongue obviously is not in a good spot. <laughs> and then we got to put all those big gaggly teeth in there, so but they kind of hide behind the lip. Now that we got our lips on. So, let's um yeah, let's go back to doing our head so we can figure out what this chick's going to look like. So we're getting into all these front loops that we left exposed when we started doing the shelf. So we need to get back into that. I'm going to do mine at the back and reattach where I fastened off. Well, where I was slip stitching. There's my seam slip stitching anyway. So I slip stitched and chain one. So in each front loop, you're just going to do one single crochet, easy peasy, all the way around. You probably can't get into your chain one space, it's pretty tight. So just go to the next loop. So I am all the way back around and I'm going to slip stitch and chain one. So you should have 60 stitches because we just did the front loops from round 40 and in round 40 we had 60 stitches. So. so for the next three rows I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 60 stitches starting in your chain one space and I will see you on the other side. So that's my three rows. So you can see a line where we made the shelf because we had to do front loop and back loop. So um, I'm using worsted weight. It's not. It's a four weight yarn, but it's a worsted weight. Like it's it's thick. Um, so mine's not as noticeable. I think that if you were using a little bit of thinner yarn, but Craft Smart's a little bit on the thicker side. So so. Uh, we're going to start decreasing now. So like I said, the decreases, they're going to be similar. Um, the last time when we did this shelf, um, I went 5 decrease, 4 decrease, and then I went to 2 and then 1. I skipped 3. In this one, I don't skip 3, but I do the exact same. 5 single crochet decrease, 4 single crochet decrease. I just do single crochets in the middle. So that's the lineup of what's coming. So your first round, which is round 50, is going to be five single crochets and a decrease. You're going to get around eight times like before. You're going to have the extra stitches. Your first stitch is that chain one space. That is five single crochets 
and then your decrease. Whichever decrease you're comfortable in doing, do it. So that's the last of my sequence. I have four stitches left, just like before when we did this shelf, which brings me down to 52 stitches. Slip stitch to the top of that chain one, chain one, and put a single crochet in there. That'll be your first stitch of our next row, which is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 52 stitches. So this is what it should look like at this point. It looks like a normal puppet so far. You just wait. <laughs> so your next decrease round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease. It's going to be the same eight times around with four extra stitches. This chain one space stitch counts. So that's four single crochets and then whatever decrease you choose to do. That's an invisible decrease. So I am back around with the end of my sequence. I have 40 stitches. I've got four extra stitches, which then gives me 44 stitches. For the round, I'm going to slip stitch and chain one, and I'm going to do one single crochet in each stitch around for my next round. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. It'll be the exact same thing. That's number one. That's three single crochets and then your decrease. So I have finished my sequence. I have 32 stitches. I have four extra stitches, just like normal. And that leaves me 36 stitches for the row. Slip stitch, chain one. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. And you will be able to get around evenly with this one. So your first stitch counts in your chain one space. So that is two single crochets and then your decrease all the way around. So I am all the way back around and I was able to do it evenly for a total of 27 stitches, slip stitch, chain one. Your next round is going to be one, your last decrease round. It's going to be one single crochets and a decrease. So your first stitch goes into that chain one space. So we jump right into our decrease. So that is it. Our hole is fairly big. We have a 18 stitch hole. You fasten off. We need to cinch this bad boy after we stuff it. So you need a little bit of a tail. 
So now we get to stuff all this inside. So mine is stuffed pretty good. The only thing when stuffing this is how far down you push on that mouth. So right now I'm pushing down so I can feel it but after I cinch it I'm going to push back up on the upper jaw and that'll fill the top just in case it gets all squiggly wiggly. So we're going to go in the front loop and out the front loop, just like that. So I'm all the way around. That's my seam. So I'm going to pull. Now we are putting hair all over the top. And then I'm going to pop across this way. Do another knot. And then I'm going to weave. So I'm just going to move my stuffing around. There. There we go. The mouth certainly will change after we start putting all the teeth in, but that's your head. All done. Just about there. So, um, I did not do a wig cap for this guy at all. Um, I figured it was just a hand puppet. But I mean you can do a wig cap if you want to do a wig cap. I think you just have to make sure that it's about, you know, fits on the top of the head. So, um, let's start doing the teeth before we do the face because the teeth are really annoying. <laughs> they really are. They're they're easy to make. They're just so difficult to sew into place because you got to remember the child's hand is going to be inside. So sewing them into place um, was difficult with the puppet. So I'm not sewing mine into place this time. I am gluing mine into place. If I can get my glue off my thing. So I'm gluing mine into place with this E6000 clear glue. It is fabulous stuff. So that's what I'm going to use to glue my teeth on because what happened last time was just ridiculous. And I don't want to use hot glue because you might feel a little bit through the where the hand goes. Now, keep in mind, mine's probably never going to be used as a puppet because I just do mine for my channel. You never know, but the teeth the teeth are going to be getting glued regardless. So you can sew, you can glue, you can do whatever you want, but get your white and your... Uh, I'm, I'm going to go down in hook size for these teeth. So um, right now I'm currently using a 5, and I'm going to go down to a 4 millimeter for the teeth. Uh, just because they just need to be tight and compact. So I'm just using a regular 4 weight. So I'm going to go down to a lower hook size just so the teeth are a little bit better than my last ones. Kind of gaggly. <laughs> Although she's got gaggly teeth. So anyway, enough blabbing. Get your stuff and I'll meet you right back here. So I have my 4 millimeter. We're going to start with a magic ring. 
of six single crochets. So again, if you don't know how to do a magic ring, just do a chain two and put six single crochets into that chain one, the first chain. For the next two rows, I'm just going to put one single crochet in each of these six stitches. So um, I'm just going to count to 12. I'm not going to use a stitch marker because I know where my stitches are. But if you're not really familiar where your stitches are, then you can use a marker. So, um... If you find that these are too small, then you can do it with a five. They're, they are big gangly teeth on the puppet normally. So you can fasten off once your two rows is done. And I will show you so, you know, you're going to need a sewing tail if you're sewing. Uh, I'm gluing, so I do not need a sewing tail. You need a cinching tail, though. So, this tail from the magic ring is the only thing that stuffs this. And it's more than enough to stuff it. So, we can cinch this little guy closed, so in and out of the front loops, just like normal. Only really going to get around a couple times. Two, four, five. So I'm going to cinch that closed and make a knot. So this will be the part that's... Uh, This will be the part that gets glued down. So I know it's round and not square like a tooth. But if you if you can make a square tooth, then knock your socks off. I much prefer to do things the easy way. So these are the teeth of my last gal. And these, that's just what I did there. So there's not a huge lot of difference, but there's going to be enough of a difference that it's not going to be too, too absolutely horrible. This glue is fabulous stuff. So I'm going to go make my six teeth, and I will meet you right back here. So, um, I only did five on my last one, and I did five on this one. I 
did that. But she has six. So um, I'm going to put a picture up of the puppet, the picture I was sent of this puppet, so that you can kind of see what you're doing. Yeah, so I think five fits in her mouth perfectly fine. It did five on my last one, and they were actually bigger. So the comparison is, you know, it's up to you. Whether you want to use your five millimeter and make these great big gaggly teeth that she does have, or, you know, something a little more conducive to the environment because we're not making this puppet as big as the puppet. So... Moving on, we're going to do, we'll get your coral color. We'll do this scar she's got up the middle. So finding the middle of her head. And then I just worked across, so I just started over here to do my, my side, my cross things for stitching. So some I went out far, some I went, I came in shallow, so some are going to be small, some are going to be big. So it only goes down so far and then it doesn't. So right here where the nose goes, it doesn't it doesn't do this stitching anymore. So I'm trying not to go up into where the mouth is going to be. Or the hand is going to be. But I'm trying to get up into the head where they're stuffing. Without making too much of a nuisance for the hand. So the hand, that's why I didn't want to sew the teeth on. Because the hand um, has to be all in that area where the sewing has to happen. So if you can manage to shove your hand up there just to make sure that you're not doing some stuff. <laughs> some stuff's not happening. So hopefully that's in the middle of my... Uh, stick some pins in for my teeth. My upper teeth are falling out. Gosh, even my lower teeth are falling out. I have to pin my teeth until they dry. And then we can go on. So, I don't think it's too important to weave or... But, I mean, if you wanted to tie this, just so nobody pulls out your stitching, because, God forbid, a child got this in their mouth... That would be absolutely horrible. I can just cut it off and poke it, poke it into the stuffing. Normally I'd weave, but I didn't leave myself enough room for weaving on that one piece, so... There's our stitching. So let's get to making the nose. Well, let's get just to making everything. Let's just get let's just get this guy done. So we're back to using our five millimeter for this nose. 
And you're going to make a magic ring. We're going to put six single crochets in here. For the next five rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these five stitches or six stitches. So I'm just going to count to 30. That's my 30 stitches, so that's 5 rows of 6 single crochets. So, um, I'm going to take my other hook and shove this straggler down in there. This nose does get stuffed. can't put much in there, but you could put some in there. So your next round, you can use a marker for this if you want to. Next round is going to be one single crochet with your marker. And then we're going to do SC2 tog. So we're going to do a decrease in the full stitch. And then three single crochets back to your marker. So that decrease will be enough to make the little turn because the nose kind of has a bend in it. And then I just want you to do two single cro or two rows of one single crochet in each of these five stitches. So I'm just going to count to ten. That's my 10 single crochets, so that's my two rows of five single crochets, and I'm going to fasten off with a sewing tail and a cinching tail. So I just have to finish stuffing this. So it's got a natural little curve. So you can see my stuffing through it. So I got too much stuffing in there, but the nose is not going to move. <laughs> Should not see stuffing through, but I already had it in there, so I just went with it. So cinch it closed like I've already showed you what a cinch. Make a knot. And then this, let's move all my, all my crap out of the way. This gets sewn on right below where we stopped doing our stitches. So a little bit of the lip is still shown. And this gets sewn on with the nose kind of twist it upwards like that. There's the nose. <laughs> I know, this, this thing is funny looking. All right, next uh, we'll do the eyes. So I showed these eyeballs earlier. 
the picture I have, uh, she has purple. Well, I think I used my purple, so I'm just going to use red. These are glue on ones. Um, you can use whatever eyeballs you want, but these seem to match her. So that's what I'm using in conjunction with getting our white and making her great big eyeball. So again, um, I'm going to use a four millimeter in this case because her eyes came out too big. So her eyes are absolutely huge and um, I just felt like I was running out of room to put you know the uh, the eyebrows are down so low and because I was running out of room to be able to put all the hair on so um, I'm gonna go down and hook size these ones were built with a five millimeter if you wanted to do that I however I'm gonna use my four millimeter so we're gonna start with a magic ring of six single crochets Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch. These are being built in amigurumi. So we use our stitch marker. That's number one. Put your second stitch in that same space. And two stitches all the way around will give you 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. And this will bring you up to 15 stitches. That's number one. That's three single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. Now you're wondering why I just didn't do one single crochet increase. I wanted to get this to 18 stitches but I wanted to do it slower so that it, the eyeball is longer. Does that make sense? So I took the long route to 18 just to get the look that I wanted. So your next increase round is going to be four single crochets and an increase and this will bring it up to 18 stitches. <laughs> There's a method to my madness. Your next round, your last round, is going to be one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches and that's just to kind of help it curve around a little bit. So fasten off with sewing tail. And I'll put this, the pattern up and you can go ahead and make your second piece. I'm not going to glue my eyes on until after both are sewn to the doll. So go ahead and make your second one and I'll meet you right back here. So I have both of mine done. They sit fairly low. So I got to do the eyelids and the eye brows. So 
everything's pretty tight on this face. So I'm going to sew until I'm three quarters of the way around. Then I'm going to put some stuffing in it. So, once you're done, and hopefully it's fixed my nose, hopefully they're in a decent spot. I think this could be over a little bit more, but that's my sewing. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to meet up here, make a double knot, and I'm going to weave this in. Here we go. So I'm not going to glue on my actual eyeballs until I have the um, eyelids done and probably the hair and, and all that stuff. And then I'll probably glue the eyeballs on, but that's how they're going to be. They're going to sit just like that. Now she's getting spooky looking. <laughs> so we'll do the eyelids next. So you'll need your coral color. So I'm using my 5mm again to do the eyelids. So you're going to make a slip knot. You're going to chain 11 and then do 10 single crochets back up. So you have 10 working stitches because the 11th one is still on your hook. Chain one, turn your work. Next round, you're going to do four single crochets. And then you're going to do an SC2 tog. So you're going to do a decrease right in the center. And then four single crochets. So that just kind of gives it the shape. Chain one, turn your work. So you should have nine stitches. I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these nine stitches. So you can fasten off. And you can go ahead and make your other one. I will put the pattern up on the screen and I will meet you right back here. So I've got, so I've got both of mine done. I used the straggler to sew it. All right, again, <laughs> I'm going to glue the eyes on after, but that's the eyes on there. 
with the eye lids, but I'm going to do the hair first. So get your blue. I did not do a wig cap. I know I already told you that. But um, if you wanted to do a wig cap, then, you know, that it's your project. I did not do one. I didn't want the head to be any heavier than it probably already is for a puppet. So just get something that you can wrap yarn around. I'm just using this makeup thing I have when I, for my dolls. My dolls make it. And I'm going to wrap it lengthwise so that it's long. You're going to need a big pair of scissors. Please don't ask me how many times I've wrapped this because I'm not counting it. Because I don't want to. I think it's ridiculous that people tell you how many times you should wrap something. Just wrap it. You're going to need a lot of it. How about that? How's that for an answer? Get a big pair of scissors. And then you're going to cut this. Oh. You're probably going to need a lot more than that. But I'm just going to show you for now. You can use whatever hook you want to use for this. It doesn't matter. Because you're just going to take a piece and you're going to fold it in half. Now it doesn't have to be exactly in half. Don't waste your time trying to get it perfect. Um, I like to start where I'm putting stuff. So um, I think I'm going to do my hairline here. So I'll do my hairline all the way around and then fill in the middle. So you're going to put it on your hook and you're going to pull through. Yarn over and pull through. That's how you're going to put your hair on. Anybody that's done dolls with me, you know. So go back into, pick up another post. Put that on your hook, pull through, yarn over, pull through. We're just going to keep going just like this. So once you have the hairline done, now you just have to fill in everything else.
So keep in mind as you go, all this hair gets pulled back and put into a pigtail. So you don't have to um, do this whole area that you're never going to see just to make your life a lot easier that gets pulled back into a pigtail so all of this under here you're never gonna see so just keep that in mind when you're adding your hair So once you're done, her hair gets cut off short. Her, she doesn't have long pigtails. She has short pigtails. So I just gotta give her a haircut. Try to get it even. Her short little pigtails. Now that her hair is all done, then we can glue her eyes on and she is going to be finished. So, a big gob of glue. Last thing that we need to do is the eyebrows. There. Oh, you're going to have to fix my eyebrows off camera. But, after my eyes dry. But anyway, there we have it. Scout. Freaky deaky, huh? Thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in the next video.